either both teams have plenty of modes, plenty of leads that are possible, and you don't want to get caught back-footed against one you just didn't expect. Yeah, and even though, even if uh, Lorsi does whatever possible to stop Trick Room from being set up, uh, Jimmy's team does have a few Pokemon that can operate outside of that Trick Room mode. That Fluttermane still hits extremely hard. Urshifu with a single strike uh, will also be able to belt out a lot of damage here as both players have locked in. Ogre Pond with the Wellspring Mask over on Jimmy's side of the field with the Fluttermane as Incineroar and Ogre Pond with the Heartflame Mask over on Lorsi's side of the field. Yeah, so two Ogre Ponds out immediately. No Trick Room visible from Jimmy. This looks a lot more like a balanced team at the moment. Um, it means it's going to be able to play pretty straightforward offense against these two. That Flutter Main immediately looks like it could pump out a ton of damage, but is also a little bit vulnerable. Doesn't have to worry about a Flare Blitz coming in from the Incineroar on the other side, but of course does not want to take an Ivy Cudgel. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Incineroar will be able to target down the Ogre Pond over on Jimmy's side of the field with a fake out to... Uh, you know, prevent possible Ivy Cudgels from landing into that Incineroar or the Hearth Flame Ogre Pond. Uh, it is intimidated, so it will not be doing as much damage barring a critical hit. So this Fluttermane uh, does have to watch out for taking some physical attacks from that Hearth Flame Ogre Pond as Incineroar on Lorsi's side will switch out. It will be the Rillaboom to take the field here. Uh, still has access to a potential fake out into that Ogre Pond plot, but will also be able to deal with this Ogre Pond on Jimmy's side of the field a lot better as Grassy Surge takes effect, Grassy Terrain takes the field. And here we go, some terrestrialization going on here. As it is going to be that Flutter Main, it will terrestrialize into that Fairy type. It is carrying that Choice spec, so it is looking to deal a lot of damage out onto the field right now. Uh, Ogre Pond with a Ogre Pond not going to care too much about any fairy type attack because of its resistance but uh it does just protect itself here as fluttermane uses dazzling gleam will hit into that rillaboom switch uh, still gonna do good damage but that rillaboom is holding the assault vest so a good boost to that special attack but you see it it almost does over 50 percent and ogre pond on jimmy's side will follow up with an ivy cudgel into that rillaboom slot yeah, so Jimmy hunting for enough damage to take down Lorsi's Incineroar. Instead finds Rillaboom coming in and lands really good damage on it. Fluttermane doesn't go after the Ogre Pond at all. Both Ogre Pond and Fluttermane mostly targeting what was that Incineroar slot. Um, would have meant that an Ivy Cudgel was pretty free there to go after the Fluttermane, but Ogre Pond just couldn't take that risk. It could have easily been a Shadow Ball coming in that spot or a Follow Me and a Water Terrestrialization to mitigate an Ivy Cudgel. And so Ogre Pond stays on the back foot for a turn, but now things are a lot more clear. The Terrestrial Jason has been spent on Jimmy's side, the choice specs has been locked into. The flexibility and options for Jimmy are a lot less reduced, which makes it possible for Josh, for Lorsi to just play into those options. And those include, now that the fairy transformation has been on Fluttermane, that fake out is available. You can mitigate damage coming in for a turn in an additional way. Lorsi will terrestrialize the Ogre Pond here, gonna drop that Mold Breaker ability, will get that Embody Aspect to get a boost to its attack. So this Ogre Pond is setting up, this Ogre Pond is ready to deal some big damage. Like you said, that Ogre Pond on Jimmy's side will be taking neutral Ivy Cudgels here. As the Flutter Main on Jimmy's side will use Dazzling Gleam, Dazzle gets the KO on that Rillaboom. So no fake out from Lorsi's side of the field. Didn't want to try to launch a fake out into that uh, Flutter Main as Ogre Pond uses Ivy Cudgel here gonna hit hard with that plus one attack into that ogre pond and that's a one hit ko yeah just so much damage coming out on the other side i think a little bit of a traded turn i'm sure in retrospect lorsi would have loved to just have fake out plus IV cudgel to take complete control of that turn but on the other hand jimmy would have loved to have a spiky shield maybe and keep that ogre pond safe so both get a little bit of what they want and uh, KOs are traded. Rillaboom goes down, the Ogre Pond goes down on the other side. Uh, Flutterman continues to stay on the field, healthy, able to just put out a ton of damage, but with one fake out gone, another fake out comes out onto the field, so that play is still there for Lorsi. Yep, Torkoal will take the field for Jimmy's side of the field. Uh, Lorsi will switch back in the Incineroar, so again, more fake out options, but, you know, Torkoal, uh, well, I guess the sun does a couple things. It activates Flutterman's Protoss, and this is boosted spe uh, Boosts its special attack, I believe. And, uh, well, now it also boosts all the fire-type attacks over on Incineroar and Ogre Pond. Yeah, Torkoal just coming in and ratcheting the damage on both sides up a notch. Those Ivy Cudgels look enormous, and those Dazzling Gleams start to look like they're a threat even to Incineroar and Ogre Pond with the Choice Specs and the Fairy Terrestrialization on top of the Protosynthesis. Um, 
I have to imagine the fake out though means that Fluttermane just has to leave the field. Can't really take advantage of this position itself. There's not the same trades available if the uh, fake out goes into some goes into another spot. And so instead, it is just Ursh. Shifu switching in and taking the fake out. And Ogre Pond on Loris' side of the field will go for an Ivy Cut to rear. Hits into that Urshifu, which was that Flutter Maiden. Picks up big damage right there and gets the KO. But Torkoal now gets to make a move here. Uh, will go for an Earth Power into that Ogre Pond slot. Does good damage, but Ogre Pond hangs on with just a sliver of health. Uh, Ogre Pond and everything touching the field will recover from the grassy terrain. So uh, that Urshifu over on Jimmy's side of the field just really switching in to sacrifice itself in order to allow Flutter Maiden to come back in, get that Protosynthesis boost again. So uh, now this Flutter Maiden is ready to go. Yeah, you can see just the sheer damage that was being pressured because of the sun and the embody aspect. I mean, that even Urshifu couldn't come out, and the fake out meant that pressure was actually there. But now Flutter Maiden lands into such a great position, but no, just goes down to Grassy Glide. Big one-hit KO, Grassy Terrain boosted Grassy Glide into the physically weaker uh, Flutter Maiden. One-hit KO there as Incineroar will knock off the Torkoal, knocks off Torkoal's Charcoal. Torkoal now will use Eruption here. Uh, it is weakened because it took some damage, but uh, gets KO on Ogre Pond, but not much damage being dealt over to the Incineroar, and Jimmy now has to try to figure out what adjustments need to be made going into game two, because this Torkoal, quite frankly, does not have the offensive output to be able to deal with this Incineroar and this Raging Bolt that replaces the fallen Ogre Pond. No, absolutely not. For a brief moment, it looked like Fluttermane land, landed out on the field faster than both Pokemon, with Raging Bolt with, in the back with no translation be available, and just be able to pump out so much damage with Dazzling Gleam. But Grassy Clyde was enough damage to just take out the Fluttermane and basically into this game immediately. And so we're going to have to move on to game two. Jimmy has to be thinking about a different way to approach it. I think the most notable thing about this gym, game one is that Jimmy left all the Trick Room pieces behind. Basically, he played a balance game against another balanced team, where you just have the Ogre Pond, the Urshifu, and the Fluttermane with Torkoal there to support them. But I think that isn't a matchup that works well in Jimmy's favor. If you're both just going to play somewhat similar balance teams, but one of your Pokemon is a Torkoal that has very little agency in the game and has, may work to just boost the Ogre Pond on the other side as much as it helps your Fluttermane, and you don't have the fake outs, the mm -hmm. pivoting, the things to really fight in that kind of game, it's going to be really difficult to beat a player like Lorsi at his own game of balance in the situation. But I have to wonder if Jimmy's hesitance to bring Trick Room means he just doesn't think it works very well against this team. Has to worry about uh, the Ogre Pond Hearth Flame pumping out a ton of damage while you try to get Trick Room up. Yep. You have to be careful about keeping Furgraph alive because otherwise Blood Moon does not like to be up against these double uh, grassy glides. It means you're going to have to be forced to Trastalize and still take a ton of damage from them even if you use your Trastalization to get away from it. Um, and so it's a bit difficult balancing game to both use Furgraph to get a Trick Room and use Furgraph to prevent all the priority that could come out during that Trick Room. But I have to wonder if it's even like, it, 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 despite those difficulties, it's not better an option than trying to play this kind of balanced game. One thing to note about Jimmy's team is that there's no Intimidate option for Jimmy to bring, so this Heart Flame Ogre Pond over on uh, Lorsi's side is, if it does opt to be the user of Terrestrialization, automatically getting that one stage of attack boost, just automatically threatening so much offense. I mean, the Grass Glide picking up the one-hit KO on the Flutter Main, as well as just being able to pump out so much damage. We saw the Ivy Cudgel from that Heart Flame Ogre Pond, one-hit KO Jimmy's Ogre Pond. So, uh, it, yeah, I mean, if you don't have any way to deal with that Heart Flame Ogre Pond, then that Heart Flame Ogre Pond will continue to deal if, if, that, if that Grassy Clyde KO into Fluttermane is a consistent thing. I'm not just a role that works right in that situation in Lorsi's favor. It's almost untenable to try to play this game plan that Jimmy went after because if you look at Ogre Pond versus the rest of the team, we saw the Ivy Cudgel just one hit KO the Ogre Pond on the other side. You saw it one hit KO the Urshifu on the switch in. These aren't like you have no real answer for the Urshif for the Ogre Pond if you're playing outside of Trick Room and without priority protection. Yeah, so Jimmy has to try to find pieces that are required to break through Lorsi's team here. Again, mitigating this Heart Flame Ogre Pond on Lorsi's side, not allowing him to pick up so many KOs, maybe targeting down a lot faster, but Len, as you mentioned, here we go, Trick Room mode. Lorsi leading the same thing with the Heart Flame Ogre Pond. Hearth, yep, the Heart Flame Mask Ogre Pond, as well as the Incineroar. Over on Jimmy's side, it looks like it will be the Fluttermane and the Furgraph. 
Yeah, I really like seeing the Fergaroff come out here. The grassy glides were a problem, but also the fake outs were a problem. They applied pressure to that uh, flood remain after a Trastalize. I think Fergaroff is going to be useful here. It also keeps uh, RC guessing a little bit. You don't know what Pokemon are in the back. You don't know how important a Trick Room is right in this moment. How much do you have to commit to trying to stop a Trick Room? Or is Fergaroff really just there to support this flood remain? And there's a couple of other rather, relatively fast Pokemon in the back. Yep, Jimmy will opt to switch out for Rigoraf. We'll replace it with a Torkoal. So. Uh, Protosynthesis boost for the Fluttermane, as well as some Fire-type attack boost for the Ogre Pond and the Incineroar on Morsi's side. So, uh, no Trick Room for this Torkoal, though. Torkoal operating outside of Trick Room does not seem ideal because Torkoal is not a speed Pokémon. Uh, Fluttermane will Terrestrialize, will become a Fairy-type, so again, that Ferrigraph really just being a bluff to be able to have that Armor Tail ability and make sure that no Fake Out would be landing. Ogre Pond on Josh, or Lorsi side will go for a spiky shield and Incin well, looks like Fluttermane will be moving no fake out at all because of course that armor tail, but here's a dazzling gleam from the Fluttermane. Terrastalize boosted choice specs does so much damage to Incineroar, but Incineroar hangs on and will eat away at its citrus berry. Yeah, and Cineroar gets really chunked by, down by that. You can see the sheer damage. You can see why the Trastalization is also important on that side. That knockoff would have been almost a KO if, Trastal if the Trastalization hadn't come through. Now Fluttermane loses a chunk of health, gets the Choice Specs knocked off, which doesn't have quite the same damage output, but also then is free to switch moves, is able to chase after that Ogre Pond with a Shadow Ball uh, and try to put the damage together in a different way. But it looks like mostly Jimmy's going to be going after the same game plan, just with Furagraph there to support as well. Yep, and Cineroar will switch out. Rillaboom will take the field here. Here. Again, that grassy terrain will be nice. Uh, it will allow the Ogre Pond to grassy glide to be able to uh, bypass, uh, well, just get the KO right there. So uh, twofold there, setting up the grassy terrain to set up residual healing, but also allow the grassy glide to connect and pick up the KO before Fluttermane can do anything at all. Here goes Torkoal with an eruption. Rillaboom does not enjoy seeing that. Sun Boost, one hit KO and the KO on the Ogre Pond as well, so big damage being dealt to both sides. Yeah, I love that little trade there. Lorsi takes his shots as Fergraf's not coming in. Grassy Glide's just gonna KO this Flutter main. But Jimmy goes, well, if if you're going to get Rillaboom out on the field to enable Grassy Glide and then go for Grassy Glide in the Flutter main, well, that's just gonna be two Pokemon who have not just damaged Torkoal. It's gonna be sitting there at full health and they're just gonna both go down to Eruption. Two enormous KOs from Eruption traded for Flutter main. I'm not sure it's clear whose trade that is the advantage of. Uh, the Fluttermane seems so crucial to Jimmy's game plan. Um, probably may have done some of his job by getting Grassy Train down before this Raging Bolt comes in. The Ogre Pond didn't spin the Trastalization in this game. That means it's still available for the Raging Bolt to go for a Fairy Trastalization if it needs help to deal with the single strike Urshifu. Um, but definitely just an extremely explosive turn. Yeah, big damage being dealt all across the board. Lorsi down to his final two Pokemon. It is the Raging Bolt hiding in the back at full health and the Incineroar that has taken a bunch of damage as well as eaten away at its Citrus Berry. Urshifu single strike takes the field for Jimmy's side. Uh, now comes the, well, it most the Raging Bolt, it has to Terrastalize. Like, Incineroar is not really a great option for Terrastalization here. Uh, so Raging Bolt Terrastalizing into that fairy type to be able to withstand any dark type attacks from that Urshifu, but it does have access to Poison Jab as Ferrigraph here will take the field, giving protection with that Armor Tail ability. And here it is, Raging Bolt will Terrastalize into that fairy type, just trying to resist any dark type move, possible Wicked Blow, a possible Sucker Punch into that slot. But again, Poison Jab can do a lot of damage to this fairy type Raging Bolt. Yeah, and whether it does it this turn or not, it's just a close combat coming in this turn because it is Assault Vest that Urshifu is going to be free to change targeting. It's going to be able to chase this Raging Bolt with Poison Jab on future turns. And of course, that means with Close Combat landing into Incineroar, Incineroar unable to protect itself. It couldn't have been fake out with the, the Furigraph coming in. That was a KO that had to land and put Lorsi down to just one Pokemon. Yep, and Furigraph does take a Dragon Pulse, will heal back with that Citrus Berry. So uh, Furigraph now at about three-fourths of its health remaining. Urshifu does have a uh, defense drop from the Close Combat, but again, can now start targeting with the Poison Jab. So uh, you do have to watch out, though, because the Close Combat uh, defense drops could matter here. But here's a helping hand from that Furigraph. Will boost this Poison Jab from Urshifu, and here's the Poison Jab into that Raging Bolt. Doesn't oh, it's not even that do much. 50% at all. So Raging Bolt hanging on as Raging Bolt 
goes for another Dragon Pulse in Frigograph, but again, that Grassy Terrain and that Citrus Berry taking it out of range from being KO'd from the second Dragon Pulse. Yeah, I mean, I think that ends up being a pretty good turn for Jimmy. Uh, you have to imagine with that targeting horse, he was expecting the Urshifu to just switch off the field, try to get rid of that close combat special defense drop, but he can't allow these turns to go by. Well, that Poison Jab didn't do that much. It maybe feel, made it feel like the game was still in play. That Poison Jab can't be traded for a Dragon Pulse that just does damage to Frigar without actually getting the KO, because that means another Poison Jab is coming in. Yep, and Raging Bolt hangs on with uh, barely any health at all, but here's a Dragon Pulse, and Urshifu, thanks to that Assault Fest, does hang on. It does have one stage of decreased special attack, so uh, again, it's kind of interesting to note. This Poison Jab from the Urshifu, boosted by Helping Hand, is going to be a three-hit KO anyways. Yeah, it's going to be a three KO. You have to also look at that that Dragon Pulse damage, which was not enough to pick up the KO on Urshifu. And imagine that was basically the best possible situation for Dragon Pulse damage into that Urshifu. It, the sun was still up to give the Protosynthesis boost to the Raging Bolt. The Urshifu had been forced to close combat and lose one stage of special defense, and it still wasn't enough to pick up the KO. That means that the worst he can't really play for that end game, because even without catching a move on Trastalization, Jimmy can just wait, find out where the Trastalization is, and just eventually win that with Poison Jabs. Yeah, taking a quick look here at the replay, turn one was a pretty explosive start. Choice Specs, Terrastalized, uh, Protos Protosynthesis boosted, Dazzling Gleam doing so much damage to that Incineroar. Unfortunately, that Fluttermane has kind of run into issues where it just could not uh, be out on the field at the same time as the Ogre Pond because of the threat of the, how much damage that Grassy Glide does, but that was a great turn because of the trades. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, the the threat of the Grassy Glide is only there if you don't have to take too many other actions to enable it, right? In that case, it was the Rillaboom having to switch in, which meant completely ignoring the other slot. I think that was actually just a play that doesn't work for Lurcy in almost any situation, because if the Torkoal is staying in, then it's going to click Eruption. Really, really nothing else to click there. Pretty and you're yeah. take those two KOs. If the Torkoal is not staying in, then it's switching to Furgraph and blocking your Grassy Glide. It was a play that probably didn't have any real winning outcome for Lorsi, and instead it ends up with like a devastating double KO with Eruption. Flood Remain does its job. It becomes a focus that allows uh, the Incineroar to be weakened enough that Close Combat was able to pick up the KO later, and then to open the space for Torkoal to get those double KO with Eruption, which meant that left basically Raging Bolt on an island by itself. Because with Incineroar Weekend and without Protect, it just went down to close combat the next turn it was on the field. Yep, and uh, something for Jimmy to note here is that, you know, you, you, he, Jimmy was able to win without setting up that Trick Room. Like, Furgraph really was just taking the field in order to provide that armor tail, which is super important to pre prevent the, the possibilities of you know, the Rillaboom or the Incineroar fake out. Yeah, I mean, I think it's absolutely critical Jimmy continues to bring it because the armor tail is helpful even if he doesn't go for the Trick Room, and it makes Lorsi at least think about the Trick Room mm -hmm. all the time because Torkoal, you saw how much damage it was able to do when it got a free turn. There's a lot more free turns coming if Furgraph gets a free Trick Room. Jimmy will lead with the same Fluttermane and Furigraph. Over on Lorsi's side, it will be the same leads as well the Heart Flame Mask Ogre Pond as well as the Incineroar. So twice now we've seen this Fluttermane up against the Ogre Pond, and the Fluttermane just initially go for a Dazzling Gleam to mostly target the thing sitting next to Ogre Pond, while well, Ogre Pond just protects itself. You have to wonder if Lorsi is ready to instead take the shot this turn and just Ivy Cudgel that slot. If you can just take a resisted Dazzling Gleam into Ogre Pond and get rid of that Fluttermane without having to spend nearly as many resources as you did in Game 1, which Lorsi was able to win anyway, or in Game 2, where there's ended up being too high of a cost to take down Fluttermane, it's so easy. But of course, this could be the one game where Jimmy shifts it up and just goes for a Shadow Ball for enormous damage into uh, the Ogre Pond. You have to imagine that if it is that full damage combo of the Specs and the Protosynthesis, that it would be enough damage to pick up a KO onto Ogre Pond. Time winding down here for the decision of the turn. Looks like somebody is going to Terrastalize. It is going to be the Heart Flame Mask Ogre Pond going to get that Embody Aspect and get that plus one attack boost. So now this Ogre Pond will be threatening some offensive options. Uh, where is it going to land as Fluttermane goes for a Power Gem here? Hits him that Ogre Pond, gets the one hit KO. Yeah, I said Shadow Ball, but Power Gem is even easier to make sure that you lock up the damage. And so Lorsi finally takes the risk, doesn't spike, he shield the Ogre Pond on the first turn and pays the cost. Loses Ogre Pond to a one hit KO while just taunting this Frigorath. Really strong first turn for Jimmy. Yeah, and Frigorath gets taunted, cannot use Trick Room, but such a big turn right there from Jimmy, being able to 
eliminate that hard flame mask ogre pawn after it had terrestrialized raging bolt will take the field here for lorsi but uh you know the flutter main could be problematic if it can switch out and be able to reset its choice spec lock choice specs locked move yeah you have to imagine that that's what jimmy's going to be after now that maybe so telegraphed that that's what the opening where he needs to try to claw his way back into this game. Furgraph taunted, not much of a threat. The Fluttermane locked into Power Gem. Can still try to just go on the offense against the Incinerar. You have to be a little bit careful that that isn't just Protosynthesis Choice Specs Power Gem landing into another super effective target. Um, but this is the turn to try to get maybe a Calm Mind boost, try to reposition um, and find a way back into this game playing three on four. Yeah, so Lorsi now has to find options for that Raging Bolt to be able to set up Calm Minds. Uh, Jimmy making sure that that Fluttermane can come back in and put a lot of pressure down onto that Raging Bolt, switches out that Fluttermane for the Urshifu, and Lorsi will switch out Incineroar for the Rillaboom. There it is, the grassy terrain that's going to be so crucial to make sure that Raging Bolt has a lot of power to stay as Jimmy just double switching. It's a revolving door of Pokemon here as Jimmy switches out the Furgraft and it will be the Torkoal to take the field with a Protosynthesis boost for this Raging Bolt here. We will get a boost to the special attack, so this Raging Bolt can do some more damage. But hey, you know what's better than more damage? Even more damage yeah. and more bulk. A free combine, I think the bulk is really important. Of course, the bulk's not going to help you against the Urshifu on the other side, but it'll help deal the damage to these other three and withstand their attacks. You can see the really high positional cost that Jimmy paid for that turn one, right? It was an enormous KO, but then forced a double switch. Um, and a switch that, you know, you don't really want Torkoal on the field here. You've just given Protosynthesis over to Raging Bolt. Uh, it at least threatens an eruption into Rillaboom that makes uh, Lorsi have to acknowledge the Pokemon and, and, and give its credit, but it could easily be uh, mitigated with a switch back to Incineroar. Raging Bolt resists that. Now a plus one special defense isn't really too worried about what Torkoal is doing. I do think there's a nice combination where if, if the Trastalization is forced, it seems like Raging Bolt is going to have to tear at some point to get away from Wicked Blow and super effective fairy moves. Um, well, once it's Trastalized, then you're a little bit more worried about fire moves. Can't Trastalize. Oh, the third body aspect has already yeah. been used. Yeah, already been used, yeah. As uh, Torkoal gets knocked out immediately, uh, one hit KO'd by the Raging Bolt as Rillaboom uses Wood Hammer here. Will connect into that Urshifu. Boosted by that Grassy Terrain, Urshifu will hang on. But yeah, so this this Raging Bolt, it's stuck like that. Uh, nice thing about that for Jimmy's side of the field is that, you know, we, we saw how much damage that Poison Jab did. Not much. And instead now, Jimmy can be content to just continue to use Wicked Blow, possibly even go for a Sucker Punch to be able to uh, hit into that Raging Bolt slot. Yeah, absolutely. I would have to imagine the next goal with the offense, though, is Fluttermane. Uh, Torkoal paid the cost this turn, just went down in, in one hit, but that just paves the way for Fluttermane to come back in. And if you're sitting in Lorsi's shoes, you'd not want that Fluttermane to come back in. It's going to deal so much damage. Of course, priority threatens it, but Frigoraph is still fully healthy in the back, is able to provide armor tail support. Um, that would mean Dazzling Gleams would just do a ton of damage. You have to be careful. Uh, our, we saw the Rillaboom uh, Dazzling Gleam Choice Specs Protosynthesis damage uh, in game one, and it would not have picked up the KO for on Rillaboom at this health. If if Rillaboom just weathers an attack and then lands a wood hammer into Fluttermane, that may be game deciding uh, in, in Lorsi's favor if he can get rid of that Pokemon. So you have to be a little bit cautious, but it seems like Fluttermane is just this huge weapon being ready to be spent to deal a ton of damage, and Lorsi can, can control a little bit where it goes to try to mitigate exactly how much he takes, but no matter what, it's going to be a lot. Urshifu will switch out. Um, again, this photograph with the armor tail ability is so important. Just does not want to get this Fluttermane on Jimmy's side of the field get picked off by a Grassy Glide, or at least heavily damaged by a Grassy Glide. I find that maybe a combo of Grassy Glide and a Thunderclap into that Fluttermane slot could do a lot of work and even be enough to pick up the one-hit KO. Or not the one-hit KO, but the KO at this range, right? So. Uh, Fluttermane does have to be careful with that, so that's why that Furgraph is taking the field. Raging Bolt using Thunderclap, but it fails, so it was targeting into that Urshifu slot as Fluttermane just going for all-out offense, uses Moonblast here, targets down that Rillaboom, just wants to get off the field and gets the KO from that range, so we saw the Dazzling Gleam not be able to get the KO. Moonblast for sure will. Yeah, Moonblast is enough to do it, and so that first KO is taken, and taken at very little risk to Flutter by Main by just prioritizing having enough damage to take the Rillaboom off the field. Uh, there wasn't really anything the damage that could come back into Fluttermane on that turn. You can't Thunderclap because of the armor tail. You can't Dragon Pulse because Fluttermane is a fairy type and just immune to it. And so Raging Bolt is just kind of 
sitting there hoping to eventually accomplish something. The best thing it could have done on that turn was Dragon Pulse Furgraph. Maybe that would have been enough damage to pick up a KO, but that's not really the trade you're looking for. It would have meant Fluttermane would have just stayed on the field healthy. Yeah, but uh, one of the nice things about removing Furgraph from the field would be the access to fake out in this very tight Fluttermane right now. So Jimmy in a really strong position right here to get this Fluttermane out onto the field with a partner Furgraph as Incineroar takes the field and it will be unable to kind of like go for the fake out here. So uh, we saw Furgraph does have access to helping hands. So uh, really Furgraph can just help Fluttermane try to just get a big one hit K on this Incineroar right now. Yeah, I mean, we, we've seen so many different tools for this damage to come together. This is now helping hand, fairy trastalization, choice specs and protosynthesis, all boosting this moon boss to just insane levels of damage. Whoa. Enough to pick up the one hit KO on Incineroar. And again, there is just no real answer into the Flutter main that is possible. The best thing that can happen is this Dragon Pulse into Furgraph, and it's not even enough to pick up the KO onto Furgraph, which means there's another turn of protection for Flutter main, and that is just one turn of protection, way too many, because that next Helping Hand, Choice Specs, Fairy Terrestrialization, Moon Blast is going to be easily more than enough damage to pick up the KO on this Raging Bolt. Yep, and Raging Bolt only has one option to hit into this Fluttermane. It is that Thunderclap, so because of that armor tail, it looks like Lorsi recognizes the writing on the wall here, preparing to run as Jimmy, after losing game one, claws back in game two and takes game three to move on to 6-0 here at the Orlando Pokemon Regional Championships. I really thought it was a great adjustment in this match from Jimmy. 